Hello, I'm Miss Sakura, and I'm going to be going over your NG2 placement skill today. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our order for the client to have an NG2. We're also going to make sure we look at if it's to be to suction or if it's to be clamped and what amount of suction should be applied. Next, we're going to gather our equipment. I'm going to show you your equipment here. We're going to get some washcloths. This can be a little bit uncomfortable for the patient. They may begin to tear up and cough, and so we might want to get some washcloths handy. Our towel, we will drape across them to protect their gown and their bed. Of course, our NG tube as well, 14 French. Inside of your package, you're going to have your NG tube. And you should have some water-soluble lubricant we will use as well. Next, you want the items that you will need to check placement. And we can do that various ways. We can check the pH of stomach secretions. We can um, instill air into the NG tube itself and listen. You can also do an, an x-ray. So we'll go ahead and get our syringe that we can use for getting some secretions or instilling air. Now, if many of you have been in the field very long, or you are even new to this skill, if the patient vomits, this probably will not be very helpful. So I would encourage you to get a large basin instead. It could be helpful for those that do not have any type of fluid restriction or swallowing restriction to be able to swallow water as you're inserting and progressing the NG tube. Again, you have to be mindful and uh, know their restrictions. For those that had a stroke um, or another type of issue, they can just swallow as you're inserting. So we will say that the client will just be able to swallow and not drink the water during this procedure. So I've gathered my equipment. I'm gonna come to the patient's room. I have everything at the bedside. I'm going to wash my hands and then come in and identify my patient. Hello, my name is Heather and I'll be taking care of you today. Can I ask your name and date of birth? We'll check. Yes, Mrs. Smith, that is your correct date of birth. We also wanna make sure that we check for allergies to latex. Some of you may or may not be aware there's various things that also um, can cause a response. People may not be aware that they are allergic to latex, but if they do have an allergy to such things as kiwi, bananas, avocados, they may very well be allergic to latex as well, so that's something to consider. Ms. Smith, the doctor has ordered for us to place an NG tube. You have a small bowel obstruction and we want to get all the contents out of your stomach to help you to feel better and help the small bowel obstruction to resolve. No, it should not hurt, but it will be a little bit uncomfortable, but we're going to help make it as smooth and quick as possible for you. So, of course, we're going to provide for privacy before we begin any type of skill by shutting the door or um, pulling the curtain around. We're going to make sure that we have our head of our bed, our bed up. This one is not quite working. And we'll lower our side row closest to us. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and drape our client, just in case they happen to get sick. And we'll bring our supplies close to us here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to measure our NG tube. And we do this by taking the end of the NG tube, putting it at the tip of the nose, measuring to the tip of the ear lobe, and then down to the xiphoid process. For this client, it's approximately 44 to 45 centimeters. We want to already, I've already taped this here, but you want to get some tape and mark your place that you will stop progressing. You also could do it with a permanent marker as well. Once we have measured, we want to wash our hands and put on our gloves. The patient is nice and up 30 to 45 degrees. We want them to be upright. 
One other thing that we want to assess as well, in addition to allergies, is to ask the patient if they've had any type of nasal surgery or if they have any type of polyps, and if so, which nair the, that they are in. So will you not use that nair? Next, before we insert, we're going to lubricate the NG tube two to four inches with the water-soluble lubricant. Okay, Ms. Smith, we're gonna get ready for our procedure here. I'm going to start inserting the NG tube. In a few moments, I'm gonna instruct you to swallow. So you will swallow and I will put the NG tube in place, okay? So we're gonna ask them to flex their head back and start inserting into the nair. When the patient starts to gag, you can have them swallow and continue in, continuing to advance until we reach our um, designated mark. In the mannequins, it will not let me go that far. If the client, of course, starts to gag, cough, is short of breath, you're going to want to pull back on the NG tube. Sometimes the NG tube can get curled up in the back of the throat, so you want to get a light or look in there and also give them a chance to rest. Once they're okay again, of course, we're going to advance to our designated mark. Before we secure it, we are going to check for placement. Again, we can do that by removing some secretions from this port here and put them into a sterile cup and um, check the level of pH to make sure it's in the stomach. You can also use your stethoscope I also want to say that any time that you're going to open up the NG tube, you want to make sure you clamp it. You'll learn a quick lesson um, in how to clean up a mess if you don't clamp your NG tube before you access it, okay? So I've got it clamped. So we have our 10 to 20 mLs of air, and we're going to put our stethoscope in our ears. We're going to place the stethoscope right where the stomach is, so not in the middle of the abdomen, but actually where the tube will lie. So you will have your stethoscope here, inject your air. You should be able to hear a little bit of gurgling and bubbling. You know that you're in the correct location. Okay, so we have it clamped. I'm gonna remove our syringe, put this back in place. Now we're going to secure our NG tube to the nose. You can go ahead and take our gloves off or you will be battling with the tape. Some facilities have devices that actually can go on the nose and they have small clamps that can encircle the NG tube to keep it in place. You just wanna be sure that you use a skim prep before you put that on. What we're going to do is take a, a, about a four inch piece of tape. We're going to split it halfway down the middle. Use our piece that um, is not torn. Put it right on the nose. This is a small nose here. Then you're going to wrap the NG tube, wrap the tape, I'm sorry, around the NG tube. We want to make sure that the tape is, of course, not getting into their eyes, anything like that. And this will keep it nice and secure. Again, like I said, we'll make sure that it's secured to the gown as well. The next thing you'll do is, if you do have an order to hook up your NG tube to suction, you can go ahead and do that. So you would probably have another um, port here or an end cap there, and you can put it right on the end. Make sure that you have the correct amount of suction. Um, it's either intermittent or continuous suction. I wanted to show you as well our suction device here. You'll notice on the top it is in off position. This would be a continuous suction if it goes to regular. And this is intermittent, so you will have a stop and start suction. When you do have it on uh, either one, regular or intermittent, we want to have it on the low. So if it's low intermittent suction, it's gonna be between 80 and 120. You can turn the dial here. This one does not actually have the vacuum on it, but you will adjust the dial to make sure that the little device is between 80 and 120 millimeters of suction. 
Of course, we're going to have a new canister and a new setup. You will also need your suction tubing that will actually go to the NG tube. Once the NG tube is in place, you're going to want to note the color and the amount of the secretions that are um, being removed from the patient's stomach. You're going to check on your patient, make sure they're doing okay. We'll start cleaning up our supplies. We'll raise the head, we'll um, put the patient back down to a safe level and document our procedure.